I lived in a community that had 67 young men killed in World War II, and the total population was less than 10,000. And all these young men, they came from my schools. So I thought I could go out there and I could make a little difference. Eager to serve his country, Robert Eugene Bush left high school at the age of 17 to join the Navy. Trained as a medical corpsman, the young hospital apprentice soon found himself engaged with the Japanese on the island of Okinawa, where a bloody inland struggle would put his courage, his medical skill, and his ability to respond defensively to a fearsome test. We had been warned about the problem of Okinawa. And the night before, we were told that the entire first division was expendable. That means that we're gonna lose everybody. And uh, that really didn't make for a happy camper, but it, uh, it did bring it to attention that we had a job to do. Of all the invasion of Okinawa, there wasn't a shot fired on the beach, only by us. The Japanese had elected to let us on board and then nail us after we got there. The morning of May 2nd, 1945, uh, it was a typical morning of, of fighting on Okinawa. Our mission that day was to take a certain hill by 8.30 in the morning. Our platoon leader, Lieutenant James Roach, elected to take a squad of men to the base of the hill, so that left two-thirds of our people up on the ridge. We set up our machine guns up on the hill, and he went down th with his 19 men down through the ravine, and all hell broke loose. Where the hell they came from, nobody knew. But uh, in the meantime, Jim Roach got hit. The rules of the road for the Navy corpsman are that if you're gonna threaten your own life to go out and get him, you're better off to reserve that because you've got 57 more men to take care of. But uh, I never adhered too much to that. So I ran across the field rapidly and I got to him in a foxhole. I said, Jim, uh, you're in good shape. I can see that we're going to fix you right up and we're going to get you out of here. In the meantime, I took a can of albumin, which is a blood plasma, because his eyes were dilating and he was slipping away. I got him going with an IV and then I looked up under the hill and not 30 feet away I saw a Japanese head, a superior private with a helmet. So I picked up Roach's carbine, and I put it up, took the safe off, and then I waited just for a second, and then another head came up. So it was just like a shooting gallery. How many I shot with that thing, I don't know, but I used up 15 rounds. But I was thinking one thing, that if they're gonna take me, by God, they're gonna pay the bill. <laughs> so while I'm looking up on the hill at the Japanese, Jim Roach gets up and walks over to one of our guys that was coming down to the hill. I said, take Roach and get him back there. And in the meantime, the Japanese looked down and saw me there and they threw a hand grenade down. I threw my arm up like that and it protected my left eye, but I lost my right eye. They hit me with three hand grenades and I said, so get the hell out of here. My plan was not to go back because I was trained, you never turn your back on these guys. I mean, they're, they're vicious and, and ferocious. So I, I went around the hill, and I looked along around the hill with the eye that I had left, and I could see the Japanese over by a machine gun. And I walked up to the back of them, and I had the element of surprise on my side. And I, I fired one round to every person. And then I looked, and there was nobody there standing but me, so I left. As soon as I got back to the battalion aid station, I said, let's go out of it. We gotta get me patched up. I gotta get home. And you know, then I was thinking of home. Up until then, we were thinking of, of securing this island, which incidentally took 273,000 lives in 82 days. That's a hell of a lot of people to die, and more than both atomic bombs. And so it wasn't a picnic. It took one year, six months, and 22 days uh, from my entire military service. And I was in the service, out of the service, home, married, and back in school, and I was still 19. 
I was rather overwhelmed at the size and the activity in Washington. The president presented us with the Medal of Honor in a beautiful ceremony. There were 14 of us, and the president said to us, I'm going to raise you one rank. And I said, Mr. President, I'm out of the service. He says, you don't get anything. You know, just like Harry Truman. You have to remember that you weren't the greatest soldier or the greatest medic of all time. You were just another one doing your job. And the same job that I was doing that day with Jim Roach, uh, I was doing for 31 days before. So my sincere feeling is that we wear the medal in honor of those that didn't get it, that should have had it, and also those that didn't come home.